Now, anytime you're getting out to scout a rapid, you're going to be looking downstream, and you might not be the first to want to paddle that rapid. So it's mandatory that you just go ahead and bring your throw rope. This way, the first person to run that rapid is going to have you already ready. But there's not much use in having a throw rope if you don't know how to use it. These throw bags are really simple to use. They're small, they're compact, they hold a lot of rope. What you do is you take your carabiner off, you open up the end of the bag just enough so that the rope will flow through freely, then you take out a bite of rope. Now I've got enough that this throw bag can have some momentum when I let it go. Anytime you're setting safety at a rapid, it's a good idea to plan what's about to happen. At a spot like this, I'm pretty sure the swimmer is going to submerge in the hole and pop up moving downstream fast. Therefore, I'm going to find a spot where I can anchor myself against the pull that's about to happen. Instead of coming down here where the rocks are slick and angled towards the river, I might be able to catch the swimmer there, but he might pull me in. Instead, I'm going to find somewhere where the rocks are projecting up or possibly where there's a tree to get behind. And I'm going to set myself up where I can take a seat or lean back and have a really good foothold to pull on. Then I'm going to wrap the rope around my waist once and pull all the slack out. This way I've got a free throwing arm and yet I'm not going to drop the rope with either hand. On one hand, if the pull is too hard, it might pull me into the water, but I'm a lot less likely to get the rope burn on my hands, which might cause me to let go or fall forwards. So in this way, I'm going to throw the rope, and as soon as that rope is headed towards the swimmer, I'm going to sit down and brace myself for the pull that's about to happen. It's a good idea to lead the swimmer just slightly. Overshot. Like if the swimmer's coming down here, I'll aim just behind the swimmer, downstream and across him. That way, as they go downstream fast and that rope starts to play out, they're going to run right into it. The other idea, some people like to just aim straight for their head and hit them with the bag. But in a case like this, where the swimmer could be underwater for a period of time, there's really not much to aim for. So always aim just slightly downstream and across the path of the swimmer, and they'll end up at the rope. It's always a good idea to practice with your throw rope so you know how long this bag is and then you can plan ahead for where that rope is going to pull somebody. Another thing to remember is to grab the rope, not the bag. These bags have 60 feet of rope in them and you don't want to go 60 feet downstream before it pulls you to the safety. Well, say I just made that throw and I missed the swimmer, but there's still a need of my help. There's another thing you can do besides stuff the whole bag back. You can just find either a rock or just grab some water. And then make your second throw. The added weight of the water will allow that bag to travel just as this if it was full. After the incident is over, it's always a good idea to stuff your throw bag. The easiest way to do this is open the bag nice and wide, hold it open with one hand, now put the throw rope over your shoulder. This allows you to stuff with one hand and hold with the other, or possibly even both hands.